a believer who is there and he feels you no know, he feels he sees and he knows that I am a sinner how can you help that believer until we know that uh, righteousness has already been restored to us because of what Jesus did for us mm -hmm. we will still continue living a beggarly life we will still continue living in poverty yeah. because of lack of knowledge because we do not know what really Jesus did for us Good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when uh, you are watching this program or depending on where you are watching us from, this is Beholding Christ Show and my name is Ben Fetcher and I'm delighted to be here again with you. It is always a pleasure, it is always a joy to meet with you and to have a moment of sharing the Word of God. And I'm so excited today because it has been a wonderful time, it has been a great time, and I know that you are ready to hear the Word, God, the word of God today. And I would like us to have a moment of prayer, then we'll get into the Word for the day. Father, we thank you this wonderful uh, day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. It is because of you that we are. It is because of you that we live. For it is in you we live, we move, and we have our being. We thank you for this wonderful moment. Even as we get into your word, we thank you that our hearts are receptive and our minds are opened, that we may be transformed as our minds are renewed by your word. We thank you and we honor you because you are a good, good father and we have been made your sons and we are your sons forever thank you for my audience today thank you for my viewers those who are watching me those who are listening to me i call them blessed and i pray that your word will be at work in their lives and their lives will never be the same again in jesus name we pray and we give thanks amen, amen and amen, amen and amen so wherever you are uh, welcome to the show beholding christ and uh, i'm excited today we'll be talking about a very interesting topic and today i am not alone i am not alone mostly you've seen me alone on this show but i'm not alone today i have my friend and uh, pastor his name is kelvin getau so I want to invite him and to welcome him to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. My yes, brother. yes. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you so coming. Much. You are a blessing. Amen. Amen. You know, I've been following what you do on uh, on Facebook amen. and uh, on social media amen. and even uh, in your place. And uh, that is why I invited you here, because I realized that you have a message for us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. Yes, sir. You know, uh, personally, to me, uh, if I'm to look for a person who taught me mm -hmm. what I know already, or a person who opened my eyes, it is you. Mm -hmm. I wow. remember back then uh, there was a certain conversation, and you were telling me this is not this is not it. This is it. And for some time, you know, there was that uh, uh, the conversation continued. But uh, after some time, after sitting down, and uh, you know, I looked at it and I saw. My brother is telling me the truth. Wow. Even after listening to other, other great men of God that who are teaching the truth, mm -hmm. after following them, after following their teaching, I saw that you know, it, was, it was in line with what you were telling me. Yeah. And I'm so grateful. I'm always so grateful because you really opened my eyes wow. to the truth. Wow. Yeah. I had forgotten that part. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. And I'm glad and humbled that I was part of your of where you are. I am part of your story yes. and uh, it's a blessing. Amen. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you too. And uh, my viewers today, uh, we have been blessed with uh, Kevin Gitao. And today we'll be talking about righteousness. And uh, I believe we'll be talking about the righteousness of God. <laughs> because there, are, there is the righteousness of man and there is the righteousness of God. But maybe before we get into that, uh, we'd like to know a little bit about yourself and uh, your work with, the, with Christ. Okay, my name is Pastor Kevin Getau, and I'm born again. The Lord Jesus is my personal savior. I minister together with a ministry called Newman's Ministry. It is located uh, in Gekambura, that is Kikuyu. And uh, we preach Christ. We preach Christ in, uh, in our ministry, and we thank God for what is going on uh, in that ministry. I'm, I'm not the main pastor. I'm an associate pastor in that ministry. We have our main pastor, who is Pastor Dennis Mbongua. We also serve with uh, James Njao and, uh, uh, and Pastor Ngash. So I'm really, really grateful to be here today. I'm also a married man. I have a wife, one wife, and two beautiful girls. 
So I'm really, really grateful, my brother, for inviting me. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. There's something you said. You said we preach Christ. Yes. You know, these days I've realized that that is one of the most powerful statements that a man can make uh -huh. or a preacher can make. Yes. Because there are so many things that are being preached. And I believe my, my viewers can uh, attest to this, that there are so many things <coughs> that are being preached. There are people who preach uh, anointing oil. Yeah. There are others who preach brooms. Yes. There are others who preach miracles. Yes. There are others who preach other things. Yes. But having a man or a preacher come boldly and say that I preach Christ. That is one of the most uh, uh, powerful things that I have realized. Sure. So maybe what do you mean when you say we preach Christ? Uh, wh what I mean is that, uh, you know, there is only one gospel. Mm -hmm. And that gospel is the gospel <coughs> of grace yeah. or the gospel of Christ. Grace and Christ is one and the same person. Yeah. So uh, what has happened is that uh, uh, in, a, in a lot of time or back then, the devil tried to, to bring to us a message that uh, would uh, put people off or from Christ. Mm -hmm. A message that would, uh, uh, would distract their eyes from Christ, from Christ, because it is in Christ that we find uh, what really God wants for us. Because the plan of God for man is Christ. Mm -hmm. It has always been Christ. Yes. Because uh, we know that... Uh, in the Garden of Eden, if you can go back, yeah. in the Garden of Eden, man was created in the perfect image and likeness mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. In the image, we mean <laughs> that uh, he, was, he, he was created in the very nature. Of God. In the very nature of God. Yeah. And in likeness, we mean that he had the ability to operate like God. Mm -hmm. And uh, God gave him power and dominion to subdue the earth. Man was in control. He was the master of the universe. Yeah. In creating man, God was, you know, he wanted to rule the world through man. Mm -hmm. That is why he <coughs> created him in his own image. So it is through this image that man would, would rule the world. Yeah. The world was subdued to him because he had the image, okay. the very image yeah. and the very likeness yeah. of God. Mm -hmm. Everything in this world would, would come to, would, would, willingly subdued to man yeah. because of that image. Yeah. Because man was at then in the God class. Yeah. But uh, when Satan came and uh, he was able to deceive man and man fell. And after the fall of man, uh, we understand what happened. Now man, now he no longer had the mastery over the world. Mm -hmm. The world was no longer subdued to him. He now became the slave of what he was the master of okay. before. Yeah. Now, even the earth itself could no longer, could no longer respond to the command of man. Yeah. And that is why God told man, now, from now henceforth, you will have to sweat to get food. Yeah. Because the earth could no longer respond mm -hmm. to him, mm -hmm. to give him food. Yeah. Before then, he did not have to sweat to get food because he was the master. When he was hungry, you know, the, the, the desire itself would bring food to him, yeah. the desire itself. Mm -hmm. But now because he fell and he was in sin, uh, the earth could no longer respond to him. Mm -hmm. And that is why now, when now Jesus comes, he comes to restore man back to his place. Okay. You see, yeah. all along, God made a plan to save man, to restore him back to the place that he was. And that plan... If, uh, if we read, I think it's in the book of Colossians, it says that that plan was Christ. Mm. The plan of man from the beginning was Christ. The plan of man was not cursed. Now this is the, 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 the divine plan from God. Yes, the divine plan of God for man, for man yeah. was never about clothes. Mm -hmm. It was never about cast. It was never about all these things that we are promised that if we sow seed, then we will have them. Mm -hmm. The plan of man, or the plan of God concerning man, from the beginning, it was Christ. Okay. It's always been Christ. Yeah. And that is why we, we are speaking about preaching Christ, mm -hmm. because it is in the preaching of Christ that we're able to reveal God's plan for each and every person that is in this world. Mm -hmm. So if we preach anything else but Christ... Uh, if we preach other things and not Christ, it means we are not preaching the plan of God. Exactly. Okay. When we are preaching other stuff, we are, not, we, we are not telling people what is the plan of God 
concerning because the plan of God was always to bring man to restore man mm -hmm. back to his place of dominion okay. and he can only come to his place of dominion back to his place of dominion when he sees Christ when he comes to Christ and when he believes in what Jesus was able to do for him on the cross of Cal uh, on the cross of Calvary yeah yes so so the, if a church or if a, a preacher does not preach Christ he is uh, leading his people astray He's not leading them to, to the purpose of God and to the will of God. Yes, and that is the plan of the devil. Mm -hmm. Because the, the plan of the devil is that man will not regain his place. Mm -hmm. Because man can only regain his place when he's in Christ. Okay. Outside Christ, Outside Christ, lost. you are lost. Okay. And that is the plan of, uh, 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 of the devil from the beginning. Yeah. He didn't want man mm -hmm. to come back to his place and to take what was given to him rightfully. In the garden of eden okay yes uh, now with that we preach christ and you have elaborated it uh, so clearly mm -hmm. according to romans chapter 5 verse 17 mm -hmm. you have seen that uh, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one jesus christ yes. and uh, we've said that we preach christ yes so when we preach righteousness mm -hmm. it must also be in line with christ right yes so i wanted i wanted you now to uh, bring us to the understanding to bring my viewer to the understanding how righteousness and Christ uh, are one. Yes. So, uh, as as you have said, as that scripture says, that when we receive the free gift of righteousness, mm -hmm. we are able to reign in life. So, therefore, we cannot reign in life when there is no righteousness. Mm -hmm. And as we said from the beginning, man was made in the image. In the image of God and we say that the image of God is his nature yeah. he was made in the very nature of God yeah. he was as righteous mm -hmm. as God is mm -hmm. and it is through this nature or through this righteousness that he had of God that he was able to reign you see yeah but then when he went and he lost the image of God when man sinned he lost the image that yeah. he was made mm -hmm. of God yeah therefore the Bible says that he became naked. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes when we read, we think that the nakedness is kukosanguo. Mm -hmm. You know, he alikuwa uchi. The physical. Uh, the, physical uh, the physical nakedness. Yeah. But that is not it. Mm -hmm. From the beginning, man was naked. Yeah. He was naked, but it is just because he was not sin conscious that he couldn't, he couldn't even, it not. was not a bother. Yeah. But the nakedness that we are speaking of is spiritual nakedness. Mm -hmm. Man was spiritually, he became naked because... He had lost the image of God because he was covered by the image and the nature of God. Yes. He lost the very righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that is why even the earth could not respond to him mm -hmm. because he was naked at, at that time. Mm -hmm. Even when God comes, yeah. he, he now begins to run away from, uh, from God. Because he was fearing. I yes. realized that I was naked. Yes. <laughs> For the first time, he says, I was afraid. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized that I was naked. So this is the very first time that, that the, word of, uh, the word afraid appears in the Bible. That is the very first time mm -hmm. when man sinned, all of a sudden he became afraid. Yeah. Fear entered mm -hmm. and now fear took control, yeah. took over. Mm -hmm. Now man could no longer uh, uh, command the earth yeah. because he had lost the very thing that would give him an edge over everything that was created. Mm -hmm. That is the righteousness of God. Yeah. He lost it. So maybe before you before even proceed, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about nakedness. Mm -hmm. So does it mean that righteousness is what it is, it is the, the spiritual covering of man? Exactly. Okay. Righteousness, in fact, they, I think there is a scripture that says it is a garment. Mm -hmm. we the have garment this, of righteousness. Uh, the, govern, the garment of righteousness. Yeah. It covers us. Mm -hmm. you know, and that is what he lost mm -hmm. in the Garden of Eden. So when he lost it, that is why he could not... Uh, he could not boldly stand in the presence of God. Exactly. So what is righteousness? Well, uh, uh, let, me, let me try to elaborate further. Mm -hmm. when, uh, when you realize that when he lost the cover, mm -hmm. man started, he, 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 you know, he, created, he started to create something that would cover his nakedness. His nakedness. Yeah. He took some leaves mm -hmm. and he started, he started covering himself. With, with those leaves, mm -hmm. but you realize that when God comes, when now God comes and he found that man has, you know, he has gone astray, mm -hmm. he has rebelled against him, God comes and he covers him with skin. Mm -hmm. 
isn't it? Yeah, sure. So the question is, is always is, where, di where did that skin come from? Mm -hmm. We can only assume that there was an animal that was slaughtered. It had to die. <laughs> there was an animal that had to die. Because there is no, there is no skin without the, sh the shedding of blood. Yes. He had to shed blood. Yes. Yeah. So in covering himself, that is what is called self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. Man was trying to cover himself with his own... With the leaves. Uh, with, with the leaves. That, mm -hmm. that is what is called self-righteousness. Yeah. Something that most people are doing even today. Mm -hmm. They think that now they can stand before God when... Uh, Maybe they have done some good things. They are prayerful. They mm -hmm. get, they, they tithe. You know, the the good works. Mm -hmm. But now God comes and He covers him with the skin of an animal. Yeah. Picturing to us the Lamb of God that will come and die for the sins of men, wow. which is Christ. Wow. So that was prophetic. It was very prophetic. That the solution, the 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 problem you've gotten into yourself in as a man. Yes. The only solution will come through. An animal or the shedding of blood. Yes. Wow, wow, that is awesome. Yes. So, so now he covers the nakedness. Yes. Mm -hmm. He covers now the nakedness, the, the nakedness of this man, which is a. It, it is still a, It is still symbolic. Mm -hmm. It was not the real it, covering. It was not the real covering. Yeah. It is still sy symbolic, mm -hmm. but we must also understand that as much as Christ came two thousand years ago, the Bible still says that he is the Lamb of God that died from the beginning, mm -hmm. from the foundations of the world. Yes. Before the foundations of the world were laid, mm -hmm. he died. Okay. Because, you see, God, is, God doesn't react. Mm. You don't do, you don't go and do something wrong and think that now God, now at Ashtuka, all of a sudden... Uh, you know, some, some, uh, sometimes back I was somewhere and I was saying that, uh, you know, how, how we, we do things or how we get ourselves into things and we are shocked like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> I, I yes. wonder when God, if God is shocked and he would call himself, oh my God. <laughs> no, God is not he, like not, that. He is not waiting for something to happen so that he can react. No, no, he is not like that. <laughs> Even he, or, he had already foreseen that Adam would fall. Mm -hmm. So and he had provided the solution before. He had already provided a solution, and the solution was still Christ mm -hmm. from the beginning. He knew that he would lose the, 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 the edge, the, some, the, the thing that he had given to him to have an edge over the world, mm -hmm. that is his own righteousness. He knew that he would lose it. Mm -hmm. And he had already provided a lamp, or he had already provided, if we go deeper, he had already provided himself to mm -hmm. save man. Yeah. Because this lamp is still God. Mm -hmm coming in the form of man okay. to come and save man. Mm -hmm. So from the foundation of the world, God already knew. So when he's showing to us this, this lamp that died and now he covers Adam, it is still symbolic. Mm. He's still trying to show man this is what is going to happen in the future. Yeah. But in his own future, God had already Mm. Or in his own past, yeah, it had because, already happened. Because again, God does not live in the in the realm of time. Yes, he's not limited to time. He is not limited he to is time. He is eternal. He is eternal. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that is the the same thing that uh, Paul is speaking about. That now that we have received this free gift of uh, righteousness mm -hmm. and the abundance of grace, now we reign in life. Wow! Because we, it has already been restored to us. Mm -hmm. And I think I've come to realize that this is what believers need to know. Yeah. This is what we need to know. Mm. Until we know that uh, righteousness has already been restored to us because of what Jesus did for us. Mm -hmm. We will still continue living a beggarly life. We will still continue living in poverty yeah. because of lack of knowledge. Because mm -hmm. we do not know what really Jesus did for us. That is why we are taking advantage of. That is why believers have been taking ad advantage of. Because they don't really understand mm -hmm. that he did it all because of them. Wow. You still continue buying brooms to go and chase demons from your house mm -hmm. because that understanding has you, not yet you come. You lack understanding. Yes, because you lack understanding. Mm -hmm. Now that goes with what uh, Prophet Hosea says, yes. that my people perish for lack of knowledge because they don't know. Because they don't know. So the problem is not the devil. The, pro <laughs> the problem is lack of knowledge. Yes, mm -hmm. the problem with believers, it is lack of knowledge because in that verse it says, my people. Mm -hmm. So God's people are those who have already received salvation. Mm. My people, it is my people. It is not even the worldly people. It is my people, my people. who are perishing mm. because of lack of knowledge. Yeah. You still continue to, to, to do things that um, you're being manipulated. Mm -hmm. You're being manipulated because you do not really understand okay. that righteousness, the righteousness that you had lost because when Adam sinned, the Bible says the same, uh, I think Romans chapter five, it says that when Adam sinned, we all sinned with him. Yeah. 
Sometimes I think like that is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. because of one man's sin. Yes, because Actually, of one man's Romans 5, disobedience. Actually, it's Romans 5.19, he says that. Yes. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Yes. Actually, all were made sinners. Yes. Okay. All. Mm -hmm. All means all. Everyone. So, the falling of man here in the garden uh, included everyone else. It included everyone. Mm. When, when Adam sinned, all, all sinned. All sinned. Mm. Everyone that is born in this world is born in sin. He's born as a sinner. That is why you need to be born again. And when you get born again, then you, what you had lost is restored back to you. Mm. And this is, I think, this is where now Satan comes and is able to, to capture us to, through religion. Mm -hmm. And he deceives us that uh, th there are things that we still need. And in that deception, the same deception that he used in the Garden of Eden, then... Uh, you realize that uh, believers are being taken advantage of because they don't understand that righteousness mm. has, been dis uh, has been restored back to them. Because go to a church, just ask a question, how many of you are righteous? Mm -hmm. And you see so many people, none of them would even dare lift a hand because mm. to them they know that they are sinners. Mm. Because of that sin consciousness. So now how, how can you help uh, a believer who is there and he feels, you know, he feels, he sees, and he knows that I am a sinner. How can you help that believer? Because most of, most of the believers are like that. Yes. How, how, can you, how can you help him understand what happened here? I think it is only through teaching. Mm. And uh, there, there is no other way you can be able to illuminate the minds of people other than through teaching, okay. other than through the giving of the knowledge of God to them. Mm. Because knowledge, what knowledge does is that knowledge uh, brings light. When knowledge comes, you know, there is light. Mm -hmm. And uh, when light comes, then darkness disappears. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to bind darkness. No, you don't have. <laughs> you just need to receive light. You just need to receive light. And unfortunately, this is what... It, this is what is lacking in the body of Christ because mm -hmm. most of the times we are praying, you know, uh, uh, rebuking darkness and such things. But when people are seated to receive knowledge, mm -hmm. to be taught the word of God, yeah. eventually light will come and darkness will disappear mm -hmm. from their lives. Okay. Yes. I, and I'm not against, you know, praying, <laughs> but there is a way we pray as believers. Mm -hmm. There is just a way we pray when we have been able to understand fully well what has really happened to us. Mm -hmm. You know, if you read in the book of Genesis, there is a time, I think, uh, this lady called Hagar. Mm -hmm. Hagar. Yeah, yeah, sure. You, you remember Hagar? Yeah. There's a time she was chased out of Abraham's house. Yeah. And uh, she went into the desert and uh, she realized that uh, the food that she had carried was, was almost done. Mm -hmm. And they realized that they, they were going to die mm -hmm. in, the, in the wilderness. But something happened. You know, Hagar took her son Ishmael to the other side because she couldn't see, she couldn't afford to see him dying. Yeah. And uh, she, she sat on this side mm -hmm. and then she cried on God. But then the Bible says clearly that God, because he wanted water, God opened her eyes mm -hmm. to see that there was a well in that Desert. Yeah, he didn't create a well. No. He opened her eyes. He just opened her eyes. The well was there. Mm -hmm. wow. But she couldn't see. Wow. So you see, that is what knowledge does. Mm -hmm. That is revelation. Knowledge brings with it revelation. And now when this revelation has sunk in your spirit, you're able now to see the things that you thought you needed. So revelation does not create something new. No. It only opens your eyes to see. to see what is already there. Exactly. Amazing, amazing. And that is what Paul is, 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 uh, is, is praying for the, the people of Ephesians. Yes. He's always praying. You, you, you look at the prayers that Paul was praying, mm -hmm. he's always praying that uh, the, their eyes will be flooded with the light of the gospel. Yeah. And you see, Paul was not praying that they may have cars, they may have great things, mm -hmm. but he prayed that their eyes of understanding may be enlightened. Yes. That, so that they may be able to see mm -hmm the things which 
have already been given to them. Mm-hmm. Because according to Peter, uh, in the book of, uh, I think, Second Peter chapter 1, he, he says that God, by his divine nature, mm-hmm. has given us all things that, uh, uh, that has, he has given us all things that pertain that pertains to, to life, life and, and to godliness wow. according mm-hmm. to his knowledge. Wow. So knowledge is key. Knowledge is very key mm. because knowledge opens up your eyes to see. It, it, it comes with light. It, it enlightens you mm-hmm. so that you may see who you have now become. Mm-hmm. And that is, I think that is a prayer that uh, every minister should pray for the church. Wow. That the people that come to church may see, may see what God has already given to them. Mm-hmm. Wow, so, it's see. not like he's going to give something new. Yes. So this is the same case about righteousness now. It is the same thing about righteousness. Yes, yes. Wow, that has been uh, an awesome discussion and I've loved it. And uh, yes, righteousness. Righteousness is very key to every believer. And uh, I want us to uh, to stop it at that for, for this episode but we'll be here for the next episode in our next session and uh, we'll keep on talking about righteousness and uh, we have added where we've said it's not like god is doing something else it's it it is what he has already given us yes so now righteousness is a gift so my viewers today be established in the knowledge that righteousness is a gift praise be to god Amen. so let us pray and uh Father, we thank you for this wonderful session. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Pastor Kevin. Thank you for using him, Lord, to help us understand and uh, to help us know that we have been given the gift of righteousness. We thank you and we honor you for such a wonderful moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen Amen and amen. Amen. So thank you very much, Pastor Kevin. You are a blessing. Amen. 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 Thank you. Wow, that has been a Beholding Christ show. Ben Fetcher is my name and I call you blessed because indeed in Christ you are blessed. Amen and amen. See you in our next episode. Amen.